Welcome to the Black Hills of South Dakota and another episode of Random Road Cuts. This, I believe, is episode number four. Thanks for joining me today, geology professor Sean Wilsey. My first time in South Dakota, so I'm really going in a little bit blind. I know a little bit about the Black Hills geology just broadly, but this road cut caught my eye and I thought, heck, this is as good a place as any to just jump in the deep end. Uh, and see what we can discern together. Um, like all road cuts, um, I try to pick them when they're a little less busy. This is Highway 385. And we're just inside the southern border of Wind Cave National Park. So hopefully it doesn't get too windy, or windy, <laughs> too noisy. Um, but let's just start with this road cut work our way from this, I guess, east or southeast end uh, over to the far end, or at least partway through it, and see what we can figure out together. Um, now, a couple things I know already going into this is that as you get further into the Black Hills, into the interior, the rocks generally get older. So they start out on the margins as being uh, Cretaceous in age, um, and then you get through more Mesozoic units, through some Paleozoic rocks, and then into the the Precambrian granites and metamorphic rocks that you find around Mount Rushmore. So um, we can see the layering here, and um, we can see that there's some thin beds that separate these layers. Um, so these look very much like sedimentary units. We can see also that there's a little bit of a dip to them, but there is some some interesting variations. You can see that the layers kind of come up, fall down. So there's some erratic behavior to the bedding itself. There may be more than one unit here. There seems to be a, a sharp contrast between these uh, more red pink units and the ones below that are a little bit more gray. The other thing I can see is that these top units here are breaking into thinner beds and down here, this rock's a little bit more massive. In fact, this rock was apparently hard enough that they needed to drill through it to get the road cut in here so we can see some of these, these drill markings here. Um, yeah, so let's figure out what these are. Um, never been here, obviously first time in South Dakota. So we're figuring this out together. I would guess these are probably Paleozoic rocks, um, but who knows? And Kind of doesn't matter. We're just trying to figure them out on our own. So uh, we can see they're finely laminated. There's some real thin lines in here. Other places they look like they're almost like a little churdy, like a like a chemical sedimentary rock. Uh, I did bring my handy dandy acid bottle. So, but we don't want to hit surfaces like this. This surface is fractured and has a mineral staining on it. I want to hit something like that first. Uh, it has a pretty good reaction, as does this more weathered surface. So before you jump to conclusions, it's always a good idea to hit a couple of places. Move down over here. There's a nice clean face. I'm gonna get a nice clean surface. Um, yeah, these are limestones. These are reacting pretty well to the acid. Um, what's interesting is right here, we can see that the rock is brecciated. So the limestone's intact and in place here, but as you move along this bed, it's fractured and fragmented. And let's just make sure we verify that's still, yeah, that looks like that's still the same stuff. Um, more brecciation in the limestone up here. So we could consider uh, some stories here. I don't know that they matter right now, but, um, Obviously, to shatter the rock, you need energy. But another thing that can happen, given that these are limestones, and as I'm looking at this more broadly, I'm seeing more of this brecciation pattern in the rock, where it's just kind of busted up, is remember, limestones are a little bit unique in that they're soluble. So the calcite in these is dissolved by groundwater moving down through it. And this is the primary rock where we see sinkholes and karst. And this, this shouldn't come as any surprise because, you know, we just entered the 
park boundary for Wind Cave National Park, which I haven't been to yet. I'm headed north in that direction. Um, and so it, it comes as no surprise then that we've got limestones here because that's the same rock type that makes up these uh, caves that we see in the Black Hills and in other places too. So we've got a limestone brecciated in places. We've got some alteration of the layers here. Now that could be folding, like tectonic folding and compression. And the Black Hills were uplifted, so that totally makes sense. Or given that the we saw the brecciation in the limestone, the fragmenting and the it's broken, um, and that this is a limestone, it could be that we have or had in places sinkholes where the limestone had dissolved, and then part of the limestone collapses into that void. And so that's another way you can get these. You can get parts of it be uh, brecciated like that. So let's make sure this other rock type that we looked at a bit also reacts pretty vigorously with the acid. So more limestone, possibly the same formation or possibly a different unit altogether. Just kind of work our way down the outcrop here. Um, and you know, just like anything, you could sort of stay in one place and. Uh, really hunker down and and look at the real real fine details great uh, thin Laminations here weathering out. So we've seen them in the rock Here, but here they're actually making weathered Surfaces, so they're actually kind of making these little mini ledges throughout the rock layers um, There's some calcite deposition. Let's see if we can zoom in on that yeah, so here's like a little tiny, what we'd call a vug, a little void that's uh, probably been dissolved over time, but it's partially now filled in. There's a little rind of uh, calcite surrounding that. And in other places, we can see these crystalline textures where the calcite is deposited along some of these fractures. So we've definitely had water move through this limestone, dissolving it out in places, re-precipitating the calcite in other places. And there's this real, there's some kind of chaotic bedding going on here. Or, I mean, if you look at the layers here, some lines going this way, then they go almost vertical, then they change again. And again, these could be small little structures, or it could be collapse due to the dissolution uh, of the limestone. If this was any other rock type, we would assume that all the, the variations we see um, are tectonic or folding. Here's some more, just, wow, this is really great. Hopefully you guys can see that as well as I can. The horizontal layers, turns up, kind of runs along there. Another layer here, kind of drops down. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks like folding and it could be, but it, it's really chaotic. It doesn't even have, I mean, look at some of this. This is, and you know, remember the, the Black Hills, I do know this, we're also, they're an uplifted area caused by compression, but it's more or less a big blister, an anticline, a dome. Um, it doesn't have, as far as I know, folds that are this tight. And so, so there's some more really nice uh, bugs up here with the calcite precipitated around them, just these little cavities, these little mini caves. Some of them are in veins. You can see some of the, the dissolution there. Maybe I can zoom in. Yeah, there you go. Huh, pretty cool. Um, yeah, so the, the bedding here, it's great that it's so finely laminated with the really thin lines, because that really allows us to see some of the detail with the beds. Let's go down a little bit further. Oh, so here's a big, a big deflection in bedding. So you can see the beds more horizontal at the bottom, coming up and turning. They almost broadly look like the letter S, right? 
Um, we could even call that an S fold if we want to and sound smart with our friends and neighbors. Um, another section of folding right through here. You can see the layering and almost like a monocline. It's a bit horizontal and it ramps up and it turns flat again, but it's all part of the same uh, S shaped fold in here. Again, those are commonly caused by monoclines. So I'm totally fine with all the deformation we're seeing being the product of tectonics and compression. But I wonder if some of it maybe is related to um, the dissolution of the limestone. There's some blocks on top that are, oh boy, big cobweb, um, much more porous, look almost like travertine or like cave deposits. Um, they're a little bit more red too, which isn't surprising given that they're near the surface, but these really go crazy with the acid. So these are, again, limestone. Travertine's a type of limestone. And we have the more dense limestone underneath. So this would have formed beneath the ocean, this limestone. Uh, and again, we can probably make a pretty good stab at the age of the unit because um, even though the ocean was here in the Cretaceous with the interior seaway, that tended to uh, mainly deposit pretty soft material, much softer um, cal calcite rich like mudstones and shales. Um, so my guess is this is older than that. So this would probably put it sometime in the Paleozoic. So if I had to guess, it's, you know, I don't know, maybe not Mississippian, maybe Pennsylvanian, uh, something like that. Here's a really cool little slab. Get some of the grass out of the way with some little tiny micro faults. So you can see all the red layer that's being cut. So these are tiny like millimeter scale faults running through uh, the limestone and offsetting some of those little thin beds there. Yeah, just like a lot of things, the more detail and scrutiny you give something, the, the more impressive it is. Um, well, we're almost to the end. Let's keep going. If you come this far, let's just let's just go all the way, team. Let's leave no no road cut completely uh, undissected. So this is looking all pretty consistent through here. Not really seeing as much of the folding, at least in the big scale that we saw earlier. Um, we can see the layers are continuous through here. Not seeing any evidence of, of large faults either. More or less the same stuff, this kind of gray to pink limestone. I'd call this a, a laminated limestone, I suppose, with all those thin little layers there. Um, let's see, anything else? Anything else popping out? You're probably seeing all sorts of stuff. You're like, wait, you just passed something really cool. Stop. Pause the tape. More of the kind of druzy calcite deposition, uh, kind of sparkly coating some of these faces. Um, haven't really seen any fossils yet, but highly likely that there are some organisms in here. Uh, here's another place where the, the laminations weather into a little ledges. This is kind of a irregular uh, rough surface. That's probably what it looks like weathered. Obviously we're looking at a road cut that's been freshly excavated by the construction. So and 
think that's pretty much it. So maybe not the most exciting, complicated road cut, but I think there were some nice little gems in there. I think there were some fun surprises. Um, you know, you just never know what you're going to run into when you pull over. It's easy to cruise by this stuff at 60, 70 miles an hour um, and get a quick glance at it and take a stab at it, but it's always something else to actually pull over and give it some scrutiny. So hope you enjoyed this. Another episode of Random Road Cuts with me, Sean Wilsey, geology professor. Um, I'm glad people are liking this series. Hopefully I'll continue to find other interesting random road cuts that I just drive by and think, hey, that might be a good candidate for the for a video. So thanks so much for your time and appreciate all your support. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, I'm trying to expand the geologic education to more folks. If you'd like to donate, feel free to do so. Um, there's a donate button on the banner of the homepage. There's a thanks button at the bottom right of the little viewer screen you're looking at. And there's a PayPal link in the video description. So until next time, thanks for joining me from the Black Hills of South Dakota and Wind Cave National Park.